Uh, let's go to the phones. Joe in Langley. Joe, you get your shot this weekend. Go ahead, sir. Ah, oh, thank you for having me on. Uh, I'm I'm one of the least Mills' biggest fans, and I'm the guy behind the least Mills cheering section on Facebook. Book, <laughs> but more importantly, I want to ask all about those bloody BC cons. Uh, I hear those BC cons elected yesterday party president, who's a homophobe who thinks if only you're just as extremist Christian evangelical as he is. You talking Reed Ellie? Around the province of British Columbia. Uh, I think uh, I'd prefer Christy Clark until we can have Elise Mills, and uh, I really wonder what a great pundit's got to say as part of her cheering section. Uh, okay, Joe, uh, Elise, I don't know about the, the homophobia reference there. I, I don't, I, I don't know. I don't know, know if I want to touch on that, but I do think, just in regards to the BC Conservatives, um, and I won't call them the BC, you know, cons because I think that conjures up a million press releases for me, but. Uh, um, I think that's the biggest issue affecting the B.C. Conservatives. I don't think it matters so much what policy they bring out. I mean, we've seen the traditional get tough on crime stuff, and, and I think, unfortunately, that messaging has been stolen and owned by, their, by the federal government. But um, I, I think the biggest concern they've got is what's going to come out of that dark you know, uh, cave that they've got going on, because if, if listeners don't know, they closed doors to that policy uh, conference or that AGM this past weekend. I, I had a very hard time. Well, I didn't get an observer tag. I, I couldn't get in. I couldn't get in to see the policy conferences. It was closed to the to the media. I yeah, it was only for party good. members, right? Yeah, yeah, so not many of us know, I don't think any of us know what was really t talked about or said, but they're obviously trying to get ready for prime time because they know they've got some uh, concerning uh, figures sitting there in the shadows. Um, they've got a broad base of Christian right-wing support there, and, and I think that they're going to have to be very careful on how they're going to look like a party that's there for the majority of the people when they're really only representing a very small minority. I know some of their, their policies or what John Cummins talks about can sound very attractive. Uh, some of the stuff he's talked about I've nodded in agreement, but what has always stopped me from jumping to that side is that they don't share my social policies. Um, there seems to be much more fear-mongering than there is uh, talk about policies uh, about bringing British Columbians together, so it's more of a divide-and-conquer policy. You'll see that on their Aboriginal policies. Um, and, and they're not really coming up with anything new. They're more about being against something than for something, and I think that you know, new Conservatives, young Conservatives like myself, uh, don't identify with that. Um, you well, know, Cummins, Cummins is bringing his, his whole uh, uh, fish war to the provincial level with the uh, the policy statement this weekend, and, uh, and David Shrek, um, I, I don't know if, if that's going to play well, uh, saying the B.C. police uh, should have the power to make arrests to stop uh, uh, the sale of salmon caught for ceremonial purposes uh, being sold on the black market. But, you know, there is an argument to be made that there's quite a bit of room in the right wing, and I, I know you guys at the NDP would, would love, to, love to see that. To be perfectly cynical and realistic about this, Politicians speak to those people who they think will vote for them and those people they think they can win over to their side. They have no concern about antagonizing anyone else. So when John Cummins talks about ideas that I may find very objectionable, uh, and the, the race-based fishery, as he uh, prefers to call it, others would say, uh, enforcement of constitutional rights for uh, Native people. However you want to deal with that issue, there's a constituency that John Cummins appeals to. Cummins, whether you like him or not, handles the media very well. He's a good person to interview. I've heard you interview him, Sean, and he skates well. Yeah, he does, and, and he's getting a lot more play than Jane Sturck, leader of the B.C. Green Party, is. He, he gets more coverage uh, in the last <clears throat> month than Jane Sturck gets in two years. Correct. Because well, I, he, he's, he's better at doing that job. Yep. And what he will do, which scares the hell out of Christy Clark and the Liberals, is he will take 10 to 15 percent of the vote, and that will kill the B.C. Liberals. We shall see. Elise, what do you think? I, I don't know if he'll take 10 to 15 percent of the vote, but, you know, I think he should send, you know, the B.C. Liberals a big bunch of flowers and a, maybe a nice bottle of scotch because, you know, David's right. He has received an enormous amount of attention in the last two weeks, and it started with those ads. And I think it was a terrible mistake by the B.C. Liberal Brain Trust to come out with those ads. Um, I don't understand it. It's, you know, it, it's exactly what he wanted. It played right into it. And it's, I think, the biggest uh, political mistake we've made in it's in quite a while. And uh, I would say the coming out of the HST, the early communications, and then this. 
And it was very disappointing for me to see such a nasty attack ad, and it gave him a whole bunch of leverage. And for those who uh, are, are listening to his sound bites and don't really delve in deep to what his party stands for and what he truly stands for, um, it sounds, it, it sort of justifies what John Cummins is saying when you listen to the ads that we put out and then you just sort of touch the surface, uh, touch the surface on his talking points. You know, there's going to be a few people that are going to jump and go, yeah, John Cummins. Um, but I think the great thing about the time between now and the next election is that what has often happened with the right, and we've seen it repeatedly, it doesn't matter what they've called themselves, is that they've always had issues. Uh, you know, a year ago they tossed their spokesperson uh, for commentary that he made, and, and he went off in a huff and talked about, you know, splitting his party membership in two and, and screaming at uh, the establishment. They can't seem to, to build a team. They can't seem to get legs up. I agree. And, I, th I, think, I think that's an issue for the Conservatives. This is the World Today Weekend on CKNW News Talk 980. John Cummins here. And, you know, uh, Lisa, on the one hand, you're saying it was the biggest mistake you ever made. Well, you're still making a mistake because the ads are still on. Pull the plug. I mean, the bottom line here is, including the late, great Jack Webster, stupid, 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 stupid. I mean, the bottom line here, what you should have been doing, and I'll give some free political advice to all the experts around Christie, and that is to do a very subtle type campaign on John Cummins, much like the Democrats did in the States. Point out that John Cummins has been in politics while he's been around forever. In fact, he'll probably be 73 when it comes to the next election in 2013. And basically compare him to John McCain in that case. And point out that if he is the leader of the Conservatives, and he's a basically a one-term person, does that mean that your vote then is going to Crystal Laney? I mean, that's how you do it in politics. Shake it up out there, liberals. Come on. Thank you, Dave. One, yeah, one, uh, one, of, one of the problems the liberals have, and, and uh, Elise is much more familiar with the internal workings and, and, and who, who's in what staff position than I am, but my understanding is that they hired yet another former uh, uh, federal liberal staffer this week and that they've got a history of moving people with conservative ties out and people with federal liberal ties in the alienation of their conservative base is going to extend and play into John Cummins' hands. Well, well, I don't know about that, Elise, because, you know, the Premier keeps telling me the Stockwell Day's on board and Chuck Strahl's on board, but uh, maybe you could speak to that for us. Well, I, I, I want to make it clear that um, they don't hold any positions within the party, of course. I mean, they've been supporters of the B.C. Liberals. I think they've always been supporters of the B.C. Liberals. We, even under with former Premier Campbell, we had one of the best relationships uh, with the federal government we've ever seen. Um, I, you know, just getting into Dave's point with the ads, I, I'm probably going to take a lot of heat from B.C. Liberals. Actually, I don't think I am. The core grassroots hate those ads. I'm going to make it very clear. I would love to pull the plug. I'd love to uh, cut up the paycheck of whoever got paid to put those ads together. They're taxes are gross. No, I, I can't. I'm not going to sit here and, um, you know, stump for a party blindly. Um, and that's not what I'm here to do either. I think they're beneath us. Um, and, you know, they gave John Cummins a month of media relations. Um, but... The, the mighty will fall because eventually what will happen is we'll forget about those ads and John Cummins, who's feeling very confident and quite comfortable um, in this sort of victim-esque spotlight, he will get more comfortable. And when John Cummins and conservatives of that nature get comfortable, they make mistakes. But needless to say, I don't like attack ads like that. I didn't like the Christie Crunch ad. I didn't like the photocopier ad from the NDP. Um, I don't like it when, when we do it. I don't like it when anyone does it. Um, I do think, though, that when negative gets, gets good, for example, is more like what they did, what the federal conservatives did with Ignatiev. It's a silent sort of branding that takes place, and then the final sort of whopper ad comes down. That's much smarter. Uh, but going after somebody over his federal pension, um, I'm going to say this. Anyone that has run for office deserves their pension. It's a hard life. He was a he was an MP for many years. He I, to rip apart his salary is ridiculous. I agree. So I many agree. Other things that we could have gunned on, and you know, if you just wait, John Cummins will write the press release for you, everybody. So yeah, Dave, I agree with you. Let's pull those ads. Let's get one. Let us 